So here we have 10 points for using the rational zero theorem to find all zeros of a polynomial and we're finding the rational zeros. So it says the function below has at least one rational zero. Use this fact to find all the other zeros of the function. Okay. So I don't have a starting point. They didn't give me any of them to begin with. So we are going to have to go through that possible rational zeros theorem. Um, So this is in descending order. So this is where I'm gonna get my P's from. This is where I'm gonna get my Q's from. So P over Q becomes plus or minus um, one, three, and nine, and one and two. So then I get possibilities of one, one half, three, three halves, nine, and nine halves. And this is where it gets interesting. In order for it to be a quote unquote zero, the remainder in the synthetic division needs to be zero. But we have a fast way of finding the remainder. That is using the remainder theorem, which says for me just to plug in the values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in these numbers and see which one of them will give me zero. And maybe more than one of them will give me zero, maybe not. I don't know. But I am going to write all of these out and then I'm gonna show you how to plug them in because this is a really long problem, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to plug them in to your function in calculator. What you do first is you have to set the X value first. So I'm gonna say one, and then I'm gonna hit the store button. I'm gonna hit the variable X, I'm gonna hit enter. So every time I hit the X key, it automatically thinks that X is one. So the first thing you do is set your first X value. Then what you do is you write the function in there with X's. So four X raised to the third, get it down, minus 16 X squared, plus nine X um, plus nine, okay? And we go from there. So we get six. So this equals six, but that is not zero. One is not going to work in the synthetic division. Now, how do I get the next one? Then you do negative one store X, hit enter. So now X is negative one. So all you have to do is go back up here, hit enter to copy it, and then hit enter again, and it'll automatically plug in negative one. So I get negative 20. That's also not zero, not gonna work. Try one half, store is X. Go up there, plug it in, I get 10. Try negative one half, store is X. Go and plug it in. I get zero, so finally I get zero. Now I'm gonna do it again to see what I can, actually, let's keep, let's work. We figured out that negative one half works, okay? So I'm gonna put all the coefficients in here in my synthetic division. So I bring down the first one, negative half of four is negative two, Combine those, negative 18. Negative half of that is going to be a positive nine. I get positive 18. Negative half of that is negative nine and I get zero, which I should, right? The remainder theorem says that when I plug in negative one half, that's gonna be my remainder. And that was the remainder I got when I did the synthetic division. Okay. Um, what is left over only has three terms in it, okay? So what I can do, and if I go I can write this in the way it's supposed to be written. It's okay. 
If you want to try to factor this and you can factor it, go for it. If you can't factor it, then just use your quadratic formula to get the other two factors, okay? So it does want me to find all the zeros of the function. So I do have one of the zeros. It's negative one half. Now I either need to factor this and set each factor equal to zero to find the other two, or I can do the quadratic formula and find the other two. I prefer to do the quadratic formula. So I'm gonna say x equals negative b plus or minus b squared minus four a c all over two a. So I get positive 18 plus or minus the square root of something over negative over eight. And I get 36. So I get 18 plus or minus six over eight, which is 18 plus six is 24 over eight and 18 minus 6 is 12 over 8. 24 over 8 reduces to 3, and 12 over 8 reduces to 3 halves. So had I kept going and plugging in these numbers, this one would have given me 0, and this one would have given me 0. Okay? The reason why I didn't continue plugging in the numbers here is because sometimes there are no more rational zeros. And so you'll have done all this work in the calculator for nothing because none of the other zeros are rational, meaning none of these will not be any of the zeros. This might not have been a perfect square, and then the answer might have had square roots in it. Those are represented here, okay? So to avoid yourself from having to use the calculator more than you need to, that's why as soon as I got one, I went in and did the synthetic division. And then once I had three terms here, I went ahead and used the quadratic formula with my A, B, and C, and I found the other two. So what is the complete answer? There's three of them. It's negative one half from the beginning, three, and then three halves. Those are all of the zeros.